So I've been doing this video review thing for a couple of months now, and one of the things that stands out is how passionate people are about their art tools. Of course, I'm not really surprised because I get passionate about this stuff too. But one thing that has surprised me is how many people are passionate about this app called Paint Tool Sci. I've been asked over and over and over if it works well on the Surface Pro. I, of course, took a look at this app early on when I got my Surface Pro and I thought, oh, this looks kind of old and dated. And it still looks old and dated. So here we go, this is my review. I'm gonna be talking about Paint Tool Sci. First of all, it runs really well on the Surface Pro. Because the Surface Pro is a full-blown Windows machine and it can run pretty much anything that Windows can run, uh, a program like this runs really well. Now you're gonna wanna go to the Windows site and download something called a WinTab driver. In fact, if you have a Surface Pro and you're doing any illustration on it and been playing around with programs, I would recommend that you go out and find this driver anyway. What it does is it allows you to control the pressure sensitivity and add some features to the pen. Not all programs need this, but a lot of older programs do. If you wanna download those, I have a link down in the description. So like I said before, my first impression of the app was that it looks kind of old. The other thing was is that the download download itself is only two and a half megs. And I'm thinking, how can a drawing program be any good if it's so small? I don't know how big Photoshop is anymore, but it's huge. It takes like a gig, maybe more. I have no idea, but it's big. When you boot up the app, it starts in a really small screen and all the controls are a little bit blurry. The Surface Pro has a high density display, a lot of pixels. And so when something's blown up on it, it can look a little bit blurry if it doesn't perfectly match the resolution, and that's what's happening with this app. Now, even though it looks a little blurry, it doesn't take away from the actual functionality of the app. And as I started to dig into that functionality, I can see why so many people like it. From a feature standpoint, it has everything that I could think of that I had needed. There was never a point when I asked the question, can it do this? And the answer was no, the answer was always yes. Now that may change from person to person, but for the sake of my art, it worked really well. There's different drawing tools that come standard with it, you know, your pencils, your pens, your airbrushes. And of course you have layers and opacity and blending modes. Now I'm using the 30 day free trial, but it will cost you about $47 if you wanna purchase it after that. At least I think it'll cost $47. The program looks really old and the website looks older. It's actually really hard to find the link to purchase the software. And when I got to that page, it didn't tell me how much it costs. It was just working me through the e-commerce piece where I had to give my email address and, and all my payment information before it actually told me what the price was. I wasn't really ready to kind of go through that and find out what kind of mystery charge was added to my card after the fact. So I didn't buy it, but I read online that it cost like 47 bucks. In fact, one of the reasons I didn't want to review this software early on was because of the way it's downloaded and how the site looks. It looks kind of sketchy. And the first link I found to it when I Googled Paint Tool Sci actually had a virus in it. So if you're gonna download it, only use the link in my description. Don't Google it, because I don't know what's safe and what's not. But once you get past all that, the aesthetics, how old and dated it looks, you dig into a decent app. So I'm gonna talk about a couple of the things that I liked about it. The color picker is nice. I like that they have the ring of colors around the outside and you can change the variation of the hue of the color you've selected on the inside. Several other programs have color pickers that are similar to this and I like working that way. Although because the screen density is so high on the Surface Pro, it is a little hard to just adjust the color a tiny bit. You tend to over adjust just because of the hit area being so small on the color picker. Also, there's a really nice brush stabilizer. When I first started drawing with this, I noticed that my strokes just weren't as confident as I felt like they should be. Now the stabilizer has different number effects and the higher you go in the numbers, the more stabilized your pen's gonna get. And there are some special settings that actually delay the pen a little bit and smooth out that line even more for you. Very similar to Lazy Numezi. Now I like pen strokes that taper. By default, the pen strokes in this application fade out with less pressure instead of tapering off into an edge. But you can adjust all your brushes to behave the way you want them to, including the taper effect that I'm going for. And also if you want a more pronounced fade on your brush with the pressure sensitivity, you can adjust that as well. Now when I was coloring is when I kind of found the piece of this program that makes it a little bit special. The color brushes just by default have this nice color blending feel to them. So if I take a white brush over a color I've already laid down, it doesn't give me a pure white, it kind of blends into the color behind it. So of course I went to town smearing colors. I've seen other apps do this well, but I was surprised to see it work this well in an app this size. Now let me talk about some of the drawbacks to using a program like this. It doesn't have a lot of the touch features that I'm used to using in other drawing programs on the Surface Pro. I'm so used to being able to like pan around my image or pinch and zoom in on an area that I wanna get like some extra details into. And not being able to do that and having to use hardware buttons to uh, actually zoom in and that sort of thing, I didn't care for all that much. And since I couldn't use a lot of these touch gestures that I've grown accustomed to, I had to rely a lot on keyboard shortcuts to find my way around the program. And also since the keyboard was open on the Surface Pro, my hand was not resting the way I like it to. 
I like to prop the keyboard underneath my screen uh, so that way I can get right over it. And of course, this affected the confidence of my lines. I also noticed that I got a surprisingly high number of false positives from my wrist when I was resting it on the screen. I'd be resting my hand on the screen while drawing, and when I pulled my hand up, I'd see like three or four little dots there. And after spending an afternoon drawing with it, I found that it was really hard to get the crisp and clean look that I was going for. Even though I can adjust the brush taper to the way I want it, I never really found something that I love. It doesn't mean it can't be done, it just was a lot of effort just to get the brushes to behave the way I wanted them to. So ultimately, I was fairly impressed with Paint Tool Sci. A fact that a painting program that is smaller than many of the files you save out from it can do so much is impressive. Since it is so small and has such a small footprint, it works efficiently. I didn't notice any lag to the brushes that I was using even as my file sizes got really big. So I can totally see why so many people still hang on to it and love it, especially if they're coloring and blending a lot. Now, if you've never used Paint Tool Sci, I don't know if I would go out of my way to recommend it to a new user, just because there are so many great Windows apps already available for drawing that are more modern. In fact, I did a roundup of the free ones just a couple weeks ago, and you can follow the link on the screen right now and check those out. Paint Tool Sci ultimately feels like a trip back in time. But since it has a free demo, if you want to check it out, might as well. So if I missed anything that you really love about this program, or that you'd just like to add to what I've already said, Hit me up in the comments or find me on Twitter and I'll see you in a week or two.